you've ever bought a piece of furniture that comes in a box and needs to be assembled, it usually comes with all the tools you need to get the job done. Some DNA websites are like getting a box of furniture parts with no directions and no tools. You're scrawled. Imagine what we could accomplish with genetic genealogy if we had the right tools. Now, everyone gives you DNA matches, but that's not always enough. What should we consider to be the minimum standard for genetic genealogy tools? One must have, I want to see the DNA segments that I share with my matches. The DNA segments I share represent ancestors. Everyone except Ancestry provides this feature. Ancestry has the segment info and could present it easily. They need to get off their ass. Clustering is nice. Clusters can be created based on shared segments. A cluster of DNA matches may represent a group of people with a common ancestor. Guess who doesn't provide clustering? Bingo, Ancestry. Now, I've used clustering at MyHeritage and GEDmatch. Both seem to be a variation of the Genetic Affairs program. The great thing about GEDmatch is that they allow you to tweak the settings a bit. Personally, I like to manually create my own clusters to get more relevance. I can only create a cluster if I can see that my matches all have the same shared DNA segments. There seems to be a theme going here. Another really handy feature is being able to see the amount of DNA shared between a match and all the subsequent shared matches. My Heritage does this extremely well. When I click on Review DNA for a match, My Heritage will show my DNA relationship to the shared matches and the relationship of the initial DNA match to the shared matches. I can also do this with GEDmatch if I'm a Tier 1 user, a couple extra bucks, or with some difficulty with the free version. Do you know who could do this easily if they wanted? Bingo, Ancestry. I don't talk about 23andMe much because I'm not a big fan. They do one thing very well, and that's their automatic family tree. Using DNA only, it will predict genetic relationships and represent them in a tree. Underneath this automatic tree is a ton of genetic science that has been used for years. Underneath this tree, there are shared segments amounts of DNA shared, and multiple relationship matrices. The 23andMe automatic trees have been regarded as highly speculative. In my expert opinion and experience, they're very accurate. A family tree based on pe paper records alone is much more likely to be highly speculative. But here's the big asterisk for 23andMe. The automatic tree only works with matches that have opted in and participate in DNA relatives or have made a one-to-one -one connection with other 23andMe customers. Good luck with that. Ancestry has a type of automatic tree that they call through lines. The through lines are based on the combination of DNA matches and family trees. If your DNA matches have crappy family trees, then your through lines will be absolute garbage. I'm still chasing some of my DNA cousins to fix the glaring mistakes in their trees, which are causing a mess on my through lines. If you've paid for the Tier 1 membership with GEDmatch, their auto kinship report provides clustering and potentially some automatic family branch creation. Not quite the tree that 23andMe can create, but still very much worth it. What you can get out of the major DNA websites is only as good as the number of users subscribed. Here's a quick chart with some rough numbers. 
Ancestry has over 25 million users. 23andMe about 15 million users. MyHeritage about 6.5 million. Family Tree DNA about 2 million and GEDmatch about 1.5 million users. Guess which site has the most users and provides the least number of genetic tools? Bingo. Ancestry. Conversely, the site with the fewest users has the best tools. GEDmatch. Now, if I'm trying to get a cluster or a genetic matrix from a site with very few users, well then, it will be garbage in and garbage out. I'm scrawed. When genetic genealogy hands you lemons, write your own programs. So, I wrote an automatic tree branch creation tool back in 2020. In my not so humble opinion, my tool is more accurate than the auto kinship tool and a lot sexier. Let's look at some examples. First, let's look at some known relationships. I ran the auto kinship report for myself in GEDmatch. When it was complete, I downloaded the report and reviewed the results. In cluster 15, I knew all the relationships and what the actual family tree should look like. Auto kinship produced nine different trees. Here is their tree number two, which is very close to reality. If I didn't know the real tree, then nine different trees would be very confusing. In the Jet Match One to Many, I selected all the same matches as the Auto Kinship cluster and produced a generation matrix through the visualization tools. When I submit that matrix into my autosomal branch tool, I get the correct tree right out of the gate. Much more visually appealing, don't you think? The difference between the processes is that auto kinship is a relationship predictor, which is why it came up with nine different tree models. My auto branch tool is a relationship calculator based on genetic algorithms going back to the 1950s. Why should we use a relationship matrix? It's not just to create pretty trees. It's because DNA inheritance is imperfect. Between any two pairs of DNA matches, one person could have inherited too much or too little common DNA, misleading the relationship. By creating a matrix of matches, there's a push-pull at every connection that evens out the imbalances of inheritance and presents an accurate web of relationships. Now that we know that the tools work, let's try solving some mysteries. Among my wife's My Heritage matches is a mystery match named Sandra. The My Heritage auto cluster didn't include all the users I wanted, so I manually clustered and manually created the relationship matrix. When building my matrix, I like to include well-known connections as well as mystery connections. That way, when I run the auto branch tool, I know which family branch I'm actually looking at. In this situation, I know how Melissa, Mark, and Bernard are related. The tree represents a family line for the surname Ovens, and to me, looks very accurate. If we follow Mark's line, his mother is Hazel, and Hazel's parents are Tom Ovens and Francis. Tom and Francis only had one daughter, Tom had a second daughter in 1927 with his second wife. Could daughter Jean be the key? Looking at Sandra's partial tree, could Jean be Peter Mann's mother? If so, she'd have to be about 15 or 16. There is another possibility. Tom's first wife, Frances, had a baby named Grace in 1923. No father was listed on the birth certificate. Tom and Francis had been divorced or separated for at least three years. Now Grace was born on March 20th, 1923. Otherwise, 
there are no further records for baby Grace. When we look closer at Sandra's tree, her maternal grandmother is also named Grace. Grace Schock was born on March 18th, 1923. Two days difference. There is no such thing as coincidence in genetic genealogy. This would mean that Tom Evans is, was, the biological father of Grace. Was Tom aware that he had another daughter? We'll never know. Now on my side, I have a mystery match named Ivy. She's a match in both ancestry and my heritage. In ancestry, I can see that Ivy belongs to my Mitchell Chapman branch in Scotland. In my heritage, the match for Ivy is 38 centimorgans. That's, that's good enough to be a third cousin once removed. Now, Ivy only has half a tree, just her maternal side, and it didn't match anything on my side. The question is, can I build a tree with DNA only? There was not enough info in Ancestry. So, in my heritage, there were 113 shared matches. Quite a few of them had a match specifically on chromosome one. It's nice being able to see the shared segments. That's all I needed to see to put together a relationship matrix. The relationship matrix is just a grid with the names across the top and down one side, Ivy, Mike, Ken, Bruce, and Kenneth. Building the matrix myself gives me flexibility the first name in the matrix will be the focus person and it will create their tree. I fill in the grid with the amount of DNA shared between the pairs in the grid. Once I'm done, I convert the amount of DNA to generations. This is because I want the output to be in generations. If all these cousins were in GEDmatch, the visualization tools would do this for me. The finished grid gets pasted into the auto branch tool and ta-da! Now Ken and Bruce have some great trees and we can see based on the auto branch tool how far back we need to go to look for a common ancestor. In their family trees, I found James Smiles and Mary Errington. These are names that I've never seen before. How real is the connection to me? Are they really my ancestors also? I searched for the surname Smiles on Ancestry and MyHeritage and found enough matches and shared matches to convince me that Smiles and Arrington were my ancestors also. Time to revalidate my Mitchell Chapman branch with DNA. Mitchell has always been a problem and is a prime candidate. Middleton has been validated back a few generations. Chapman is also good back a few generations. I haven't been able to validate the, the Wood line, but there is no way that Amelia Wood, born in 1794, could be the child of James Smiles and Mary Arrington, who were born in 1787 and 88. That takes me back to Mitchell. I've never been able to get anywhere with James Mitchell. Now, I'm just guessing at the birth date and I know that he is out of the picture by 1841 when Jane Middleton remarries. There is no smoking gun here to like really prove any of this, but a couple of ideas that I have that I'm testing are that James Mitchell is an undocumented son of James Smiles and or Mary Arrington, or that James Mitchell is an alias used by James Smiles and Mary Arrington's oldest son, William Smiles. All I know is I'm gonna need a lot more matches and a lot more tools. The bottom line is that the DNA websites that we pay for need to do a better job providing a minimum set of tools, including being able to see segment details and the amount of DNA shared across and between all shared matches. 
Then we could at least run our own analysis, or even better, they need to provide automatic DNA tree calculations. I can't imagine that a company that makes most of their money from users who stumble around trying to make sketchy family trees would actually provide tools that would help make accurate family trees. Who am I talking about? Bingo. Ancestry. Ancestry, if you're watching, get off your ass.